Hello there, I'm Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now for some of you, your PC is kind of a black box that you've bought, you plug in some cables, you turn it on, up comes Windows and that's about all you know. You may have heard of like there's a hard drive because you know there's drive C, you may have heard of words like motherboard or RAM, but really what goes on inside your PC is a bit of a mystery. Well if you want to know what happens inside your PC, what are all the different components that make it up, please let me explain. Okay, this video is really aimed at two types of people. First of all, those that really don't know anything about what's inside their PC, and they kind of would be interested to know what all these different words are and how they all interact with each other. And there's a second group of people, and that are those who maybe know a little bit about it, and they're kind of thinking in the future they might want to build their own PC. So this is kind of a foundation for a series on how to build your own PC because actually you're able to order the components individually and build a PC based on the specification that you want within the budget that you have. So let's get started. Okay, at the heart of your PC, of course, is a CPU, a central processing unit. And today these are made by two companies, Intel and AMD. Now, Intel's chips are basically the Intel Core i3, the i5, the i7, now there's the i9. And you can also get some older models like Pentiums and Celerons. And then there is AMD, and they have the Ryzen chips with the Ryzen 3, 5, and 7 copying uh, Intel's naming scheme there and then they've got some older chips as well like the FX series and things like the Athlon, Athlon 2 and you can still pick those up uh, in some places. So the way it works is if you get a low-end one like a uh, Ryzen 3 or an i3 that's got less performance and less features than what you'll get up towards the 7 or even the i9 from Intel and of course you pay for that difference. And as you go up the scale, you're getting more features and you are getting greater performance. Of course, at some point, there's a question on whether the extra money you pay is actually worth the extra leap in performance because sometimes there's a big price to pay and only a little bit to be gained. So it's careful to shop around to look exactly what type of CPU you want. Now, I'm gonna go into all of these components individually in separate videos because there's lots to talk about CPUs, lots to talk about motherboards, Lots to talk about all the other things, but really this is just an overview. So if you're enjoying this video, please do tell me in the comments if you want to have videos on the individual components and we can look at those in greater depth. Another important aspect of CPUs is the cooling fan. Now when you buy the CPU, some of them come with a cooling fan built in. It comes in a box, in a retail box, and some of them you have to buy it separately. Now of course you can buy them from AMD and from Intel, but there's also lots of third party companies that make uh, coolers. Some are more efficient, some are silent, some make sure that the processor stays at a very low temperature, and cooling is a whole thing. But basically, if you just get the right cooler for your processor, you should be okay. As long as it says this is for this processor, everything will be okay. Now each of these different types of CPUs has loads of those pins at the bottom of them, and those pins plug into a motherboard, and that's the next component we talk about. Now first of all, your motherboard needs to be compatible with the CPU that you've got, and not all CPUs have the same uh, uh, connection, the physical connection, that's called a socket. So even the i3, the i5, and the i7, amongst themselves, there are different versions depending on which chip you buy, and you have to buy a motherboard that is compatible with your uh, processor. And first of all, you do that just basically on the socket. So if it's a socket, uh, you know, AM4 from uh, AMD, and you're, you know that the processor is an AM4 processor, then they're gonna fit together. But also, you can go to the website of the motherboard manufacturer, and they'll have a list of all the CPUs exactly down to the model number that have been tested, and work with their uh, motherboard. Now motherboards come in a whole range of sizes and prices and there's a whole load of different features on them. One thing is of course the CPU as we discussed, after that there is the RAM and you need to make sure that it uses the right type of RAM and we'll deal with RAM in a minute but there's DDR4 and there's DDR3. You need to make sure it's got enough slots because if you want just eight megabytes of memory, then you might only need, let's say, two slots. But if you want 32 gigabytes of memory, then you're gonna need more slots. And if you want even more memory than that, so you need to see how many slots there are and what is the maximum amount of RAM that the motherboard supports. Then on top of that, there's a whole bunch of other things. For example, how many hard drive connectors does it have? And that's using a thing called SATA, the serial ATA interface. And then of course, there's how many USB ports it's got on it. Then there's, it's got any other types of connectivity on it. Maybe, you know, sort of a Thunderbolt or kind of, you know, Firewire from days gone past. 
are those those things built into it you also need to know how many pci express slots it's got for graphics cards most have one some have none because actually the graphics is built into the motherboard some have two and we'll talk more about that in a moment when we get over to the graphics cards then you need to look at other things like what types of ports it's got in terms of connectivity to the monitor if the video is built into the motherboard does it have vga does it have hdmi does it have dvi what does your monitor have does it match what you have so that you can get it all to work and finally with motherboards there is the size because we can trace the roots of modern day pcs right back to the ibm compatible pcs of 20 plus years ago there are some actual form factors that defy define how big the motherboard is and where the screws go. And that's called the ATX format. And then you've got mini ATX and you've got extended ATX. And you need to know basically how big the board is and whether it will go into the case that you want to buy. And we'll talk more about cases in a moment. So that's motherboards. So they're quite complicated. They come with features. Some have things like RAID built into them. And I've got a video all on RAID. You can find that up here if you want to know what that's all about. Okay, and you need to make sure that your motherboard does everything that you want it to do. Now, one of the things I mentioned about motherboard was RAM. Today, there is basically two types of RAM, DDR4 and DDR3, and they come in a different range of frequencies. The higher the frequency, the better the performance you'll get out of your PC, but the more money you will pay. And all the modern CPUs use DDR4. Some of the older ones that you can still buy would actually use DDR3. And maybe that gives you an advantage of cost, but of course, there is uh, less performance. And then in days way gone back, we had DDR2 and then also original DDR. And before that, we had some even other standards we won't even bother going into now. Maybe we'll look at that when we come to do a retro computing video. Who knows? And another important aspect, of course, is the video card. And again, there are two main manufacturers. One is uh, NVIDIA with their GeForce range, and one is AMD. And of course, AMD bought out ATI uh, several years back now. And so AMD make a whole bunch of Radeon cards and so on. And these two, again, are kind of like the Intel and uh, AMD. Well, now it's NVIDIA and AMD. And there's a lot of competition about who makes the best card for the best price and so on. And as I said earlier, sometimes you can actually put these cards together. NVIDIA have a system called SLI. Uh, AMD have a system called Crossover, and you can actually put two cards together and you can connect them up in such a way that you double the GPU performance, which really is important for playing a lot of these high-end games. But of course, that uses a lot of power from your power supply and you need good ventilation in your case. And then to power all this, you're going to need a power supply. Now, the power supply comes in a standard size, but it's got some important characteristics. One is the number of watts it's able to uh, generate, and the second is how many kind of cables it's got on it. So let's deal with watts first of all. Watts kind of start at 450 watts. It goes all the way up to maybe 1,200 watts, and it depends what you've got in your PC. Now, if you take a kind of a middle-of-the-road i7, Intel i7 processor, you've got 8 gigs of RAM, you've got an SSD flash hard drive that is you've got a normal hard drive you've got a blu-ray dvd kind of unit in there you've got kind of a, a geforce 1080 ti video card you've got maybe some uh, usb peripherals connected to it you're going to need around 550 watts that's the kind of the number that you're going to think about but if you go for a high range let's say an, an i9 and let's say you put in two graphics cards and let's say you add in another hard disk then that can easily bump up to 800 or even 900 watts now cool master who is a, a company that make cases and fans for cpus they uh, also have a website which you can kind of type in your rough configuration and it will tell you an estimate of the number of watts it will produce and then you just make sure that you buy a power supply that's slightly bigger and the other important thing about power supplies is the kind of cables that come out of it now one part is the cable that powers the motherboard itself and you need to make sure that the, the what it says on the specification for the motherboard and what it says on the power supply they actually has the right number of connectors the last motherboard i bought had a really strange set of connectors on it more than what's the norm and i really had to search hard to find a mother uh, power supply that fitted the motherboard in general of course the power supply makers want to make it uh, broadly compatible so they put as many cables and connectors from the motherboard as they can but it is something worth watching and the other thing is how many connectors it has for things like hard drives and dvd roms or blu-ray drives uh, and you need separate connectors for those and if you're planning on having lots of hard drives and you need lots of connectors and you need lots of watts to power those hard drives as well 
And I just mentioned their hard disk. Basically, there are three types of hard disk. Your traditional hard disk, which has got platters in it with magnetic material that has a read and write head that physically the disc spins and it reads and writes from it. Okay, and those come in different performance characteristics. They come in, you know, with kind of capacities and the speed that the disc spins and whether they're designed for long-term storage or just for quick performance. And there's a whole bunch of different types of discs that you can buy. Again, budget it according to the amount of storage you want, the kind of performance you want, and the kind of long-term sort of uh, support that you want. And then there, of course, there are SSDs. So these are flash drives, like a USB flash drive that you might plug in, or the, the camera, the card you put in your camera or in your phone, flash memory. And of course, they come again in different sizes. They tend to be more expensive per megabyte or per gigabyte because, of course, we're now dealing with just memory. There's no physical uh, uh, moving parts here. There's no disk that's spinning around. This is all inside uh, of the flash memory chips. And there are some questions about the longevity of them. But when we're talking longevity, we're talking years. We're not talking you know, just uh, six months or something. But it's worth investigating the longevity claims of each of the hard drives. And lastly, we come to the case. Now, cases come in a whole wide range from a whole bunch of different companies, and you can kind of get really huge ones, you can get tiny ones, you can get ones that have got lights on them and you know, glass panels, you can get very simple, cheap ones just made out of you know, aluminium or plastic. It's really up to you. You've got to make sure that your motherboard fits inside of it, you've got to make sure there is enough ventilation for the things you're putting inside, particularly if you're putting in, let's say, two graphics cards, you need to make sure that uh, that can uh, be supported in there, and you've got to make sure there's enough hard drive bays, depending on how many hard drives you want to put in there. But once you find the capacity of the case, then you can decide what kind of case you want to go with your setup. After that, of course, is a mouse and a keyboard and a monitor and a power lead, but I won't talk about those, I assume you know what those are. And so there you go, that was a very quick trip through the, the world of the components that you get inside of a desktop PC. You can buy these components individually, you can actually upgrade your existing PC by maybe taking out the current graphics card and putting in a new one, adding in a second hard drive, adding in more memory. These are all possible once you know what these individual components do. And then of course sites like Amazon and eBay are great for getting hold of those pieces. As I said, I will cover these in more depth in individual videos about CPUs, about motherboards, so we can really dig deep into the kind of features and things you can buy and what you should be looking out for when you buy them. Well, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. I really do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the channel. Please share it on social media. Please go down into the comments and tell me what you think about this video. Tell me what you think about other videos here on this channel. And I'll be down in the comments reading them. And also, I'll see you in my next video.